Hello and welcome to SK Live. Uh, I'm your host, Shanvi Sadana, and today we have India's trap shooter, Shagun Chaudhary, with us on SK Live. She's an Olymp Olympian and a national champion. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shanvi. How are you? Good. I'm good. And you? I'm not too bad in the current circumstances. <laughs> yeah. So, are you getting time for your shooting practice? How are you keeping yourself busy? Well, now it's sort of opened up now. Uh, the first three months uh, from uh, from uh, April up till June, it was still we couldn't shoot and make. And I shoot clay pigeon, so it's not something that you can actually practice at home. So right. we had to because I'd probably be arrested if I did that. And uh, so we had to, we had to wait for the rages to open up. But thankfully mm -hmm. now they have. So I'm trying. I'm I'm managing to get a, at least a little time for shooting. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So uh, you are a trap shooter. How tough or easy is this category compared to what? To other categories of uh, you know, like uh, so, uh, so trap shooting is uh, is uh, it's challenging. Why? Because uh, we shoot uh, at a flying target, and the right. target is about a hundred kilometers an hour, and uh, uh, we have to break it into like a zillion pieces. So that's the that's the kind of uh, comfort that we get once we see that shatter in in midair. But un, like uh, as far as uh, skill level is concerned, I think every sport has its own kind, and we are trained to what we have to do as far as clay pigeon shooting is concerned. Air rifle, air pistol are more like stationary targets. We call them paper punches because we're basically making holes in uh, paper, whereas we are actually uh, bursting things with bullets. So yeah. <laughs> It's more fun, definitely, and I think the air rifle air pistol shooters would also agree with me when I say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how did you uh, choose this amongst other categories? How and why did you choose uh, trap shooting? Well, it happened to me because uh, I was introduced to the sport at a very, very young age. I was yeah. all of me when my dad was a skeet shooter, and right. he used to go and. Uh, we were in Bikaner at the time, and he used to go, and it was basically the hub where clay pigeon shooting actually came into India. Maharaja Karni Singh Ji was the person who actually brought clay pigeon uh, shooting into India, So, and he had the good fortune to train with him. And mm. I had the good fortune to be his daughter, where I would uh, go to the range of my children at the age of three, and that's that's all that I saw. So as far as sports is concerned, that I just saw my dad shooting with everyone else and uh, so that introduction like I said happened pretty early on and uh, so I mean it was so thrilling at the time so I I mean it was a natural progression in my case. Right so is there a very less margin of error uh, in trap shooting? Mm, there's uh, I think there's yeah I think the margin of error is absolutely minuscule because uh, um, so we we don't get scored on where you hit the target. Like uh, unlike uh, air rifle air pistol, where you could probably get a 10.9 or 10.8 or an eight or something, we right. we have a kill or a miss. It's called a kill because uh, clay pigeon shooting came from uh, back in the day when pigeons were actually released from traps and uh, they they had to fly at a certain distance and uh, people had to shoot them down and then obviously the sport was very gory. So they move that to clay pigeons where we have these round discs. So every time we hit one, it's called a kill. And uh, mm -hmm. we miss, then it's a zero. So margin of error in, in my sport is very, very small because, uh, I mean, scores go at like uh, 124 out of 125, 123 out of 125. So in the entire duration, you're only allowed to miss like barely you, uh, two or three targets in order to be there. So yeah. Right. So yeah. tell us more about your younger days. How uh, how was it? Uh, younger days, I was always uh, inclined towards sports. So I uh, I went to school in Jaipur uh, to MGD, which is Maharani Gayatri Devi, yeah. and uh, uh, and uh, my school was also always very encouraging towards sports. So and uh, my mom was very uh, so anything that I used to pick up had to be I had to be I had to be competitive at, uh, at it. So even if I enjoyed swimming and I used to go to the pool just to splash around, she like the coach would say, you know, she has she has what she needs uh, in order to yeah. make it to the national level or whatever. I think you should push her a little more and everything. So from splashing into the pool and the time off, there I was doing hundred lengths in the morning, hundred lengths in the evening, till the time I actually made it in to, uh, to be a national swimmer. So everything according for me was uh, very uh, 
driven in terms of performance and i think that kind of uh, you know whether it was academics whether it was sports and anything there was always a target to achieve and that's exactly what happened to me in shooting also because when i picked up shooting then it wasn't something that uh, came to girls naturally at the time i was uh, one of the few who actually started and my mom was like absolutely appalled she like you know why would you uh, why are you uh, doing this like where is your career headed to and uh, uh, you know what does it have for you in the future and everything but i i had my mind made up and i had my dad as a really really strong support system at the time so i did what i did. yeah wow very yeah. very competitive all the time all all right from the start yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. why didn't you uh, qualify for the rio and tokyo olympics are you ready for paris and in case tokyo doesn't happen because of the pandemic yeah the, uh, so tokyo is a question mark at the moment because like we all know yeah. japan has said that if they don't uh, host them in 21 then the uh, the olympics will be scrapped and then the next olympics are only going to be in 24 in paris and uh, why i didn't qualify in rio or in or uh, for tokyo is uh, there were very near misses i mean we both are sports people so we understand yeah. uh, you put in 99% of hard work and you know 1% you based on luck and uh, so i missed out on the criteria by one or two targets and, uh, so yeah. came back to this and uh, missed out but that doesn't mean that uh, i'm giving up anytime soon because as a shooter we have uh, we have age of and as long as our reflexes are working fine i think we we will be okay yeah okay so, and how, how was it uh, representing india in the london olympics in 2012 it was the experience was absolutely surreal to be honest it was uh, it was my first olympics and uh, uh, it was just to be uh, walking shoulder to shoulder with the likes of uh, whether it was jokovic or whether it was bolt or whether it was uh, you know all these uh, really famous athletes whether it was sharapova whether and just to be on the same platform and uh, feel yourself as an equal on uh, on uh, you know um, at at the games where uh, nobody was less or more every we all came to the games in order to perform and once you reach the big village everybody is literally starting from scratch so it was uh, for me it was uh, it was very overwhelming for me to be honest and uh, uh, you know i lived every moment of the olympics and uh, i can't uh, wait to go for the next one yeah and you're also one of the first indian women to qualify for the olympic trap shooting event how does that feel yeah i am the first and the only one till now yes. and uh, yeah so um, i mean it was uh, you know uh, there weren't uh, too many women chanvi uh, who actually started off uh, shooting clay pigeon and uh, there was always this deterrent because uh, you know girls don't shoot guns and especially hunting mm -hmm. guns and mm -hmm. even if they do then they don't do it professionally because right. uh, nobody had ever done it before so for me it was and being brought up in the family that i've been uh, there was always this uh, like my parents always wanted me to have an end goal and uh, so when i took up sports as well it was uh, like i said my par uh, my parents had the belief in me before i did that i can uh, i can achieve something that nobody ever had done before and just with that belief overcoming all the obstacles and overcoming uh, all the hurdles and all that i mean it i mean it it's it's amazing to actually have that uh, written down in history that you'll always be the first one hope not right. the only one but uh, the first one to actually do something so that i mean that it was a very overwhelming and very emotional moment when i won the olympic quota and uh, will still remain and i had the good fortune that my dad was there to witness it and he is the one because i was so engrossed in uh, in my competition and in the finals that i didn't really know what actually happened so i remember looking back and my dad came running and he was like he came running to me and i'm like dad i'd like what happened he was like baby we're going to london and <laughs> that moment i mean it was that moment where he was teary eyed i was my eyes welled up and i'm like oh my god finally happened like it finally like ma we managed to do this yeah so it was it's, it's been really really special yeah. right so is abhinav bindra the best shooter uh, india has ever seen so abhinav bindra has been one of the best shooters that india has ever seen there is no argument there but uh, looking at the way the shooting has actually uh, progressed over the years has been outstanding like uh, 
shooting has um, in the last year uh, indian shooting was number 1 in the world we had surpassed the chinese we surpassed the italians so in the in the in the uh, international rankings we were actually number 1 and uh, it was uh, so it's been absolutely amazing it's been uh, and abhinav has i mean abhinav actually set the ball rolling so abhinav gave hope to so many more sports persons that and it's, it always takes that one person right who actually achieves something and then you kind of the you kind of look at that person you like you know if he can do it then i'm sure if i put in the effort i'll be able to do it too and uh, that's exactly how it, how it's happened in shooting as far as uh, shooting is concerned right so why did you move from double trap to trap uh, why is it considered to be a bold move uh well i was uh, i mean i really didn't have an option at the time of course so i so i started shooting uh, clay pigeon i started shooting double trap and uh, in uh, 2003 is when i picked up my first international medal and was also my first international competition and in 2004 at the beijing olympics they actually took a call that uh, you know double trap for women will actually be eliminated from the olympics so now when your end goal is not in sight when this is where that's where you want to reach and you know right. it it's not possible anymore then it doesn't make sense to pursue that because right. automatically the competitions go down and then there's, there's no motivation as well so the other so the other discipline was trap so i had to shift from double trap to trap which is a completely different technique different gun different uh, you know all of that but it's something that i had to do in order to realize my goal of actually reaching the pinnacle of sport Yeah. Okay. And you also did really well in the national shotgun uh, shooting championship in November 2019. What are yeah, your thoughts on that? I did uh, yeah, I did decently well and uh, I am still uh, we also I mean uh, whether it was the nationals whether it was the Asian Games where we picked up the first medal that the women's team actually did in 2014 in Cheon or whatever. every every competition is more like uh, it adds to the learning curve so it's not that uh, you know we go back home to really, we do well we are happy about it for uh, probably a day or two then we get all the accolades we get all the messages and we get all of that but then yes. there's all something because if it's not a perfect score that means uh, you still have something more to achieve so right. yeah so i mean I, uh, every win is like a great motivator and every loss is something that you i, I think losses are something that you learn more from than wins mm -hmm. so uh, i mean 2019 was great 2018 was great i've, I've been doing consistently well since 2017 actually since i've got my new coach so right. yeah there's been no looking back and i'm really looking forward to the future now Yes, and so uh, what do you need as an athlete to become an international shooter? Uh, what uh, uh, what every athlete needs in order for any games that they want to pursue, they need a really really strong support system. So uh, we need an entire team of people who are actually uh, pushing us and guiding us. Uh, when I started off, I did not have that team. you kind of build that team over the years you put your trust in people where you know that they only want the best for you whether it's your sports psychologist uh, who I had a fabulous sports psychologist uh, before I went to London who actually helped me achieve what I want to achieve i have a, an absolute fabulous coach from italy now daniel despinio whom i've been training with who's absolutely changed my game my approach to the game and all of that So yeah so it's basically a very strong team of people behind any sports person that actually puts uh, motivates the uh, motivates the athlete in order to do their best on the ground when when it's required So uh, how tough uh, are the national championships in India Uh the national championships have got tougher now but even early on when i start, when i was shooting and i was used to compete in the in the national championships even though there weren't too many girls but i had like a minimum score to beat in order to be a uh, 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 be a part of the team and if i did not achieve that score then i wasn't sent anywhere so and now uh, i'm really uh, proud to say that uh, we have a very strong bench strength 
and uh, we have a lot of uh, youngsters young girls who are coming in to uh, shoot clay pigeon shooting and uh, they've just and you know so uh, we as uh, they call us veterans because we've yes. been there since the absolute beginning but we have yes. to pull us up because uh, i think um, in uh, you know it's very important to have healthy competition within the country in order to uh, to be at your best when you go and compete for the country so uh, this act um, so the national championships are pretty tough as well because the scores have ha have been absolutely amazing we have to shoot really really high scores um the difference between one and two is very very small now which wasn't the case earlier so yeah it's just going everything is actually just going in the right direction as far as uh, sports women is concerned in uh, clay pigeon shooting yeah okay that's great great to know that yeah. and also a decade ago a lot of people complained about lack of equipment has that changed now or so it used to be uh, it still is a sort of a cash way to situation because uh, a person can only take part in the uh, can only take uh, uh, shoot if they have their own gun now how do they have their own gun and have their own cartridges if they uh, are at a certain level in the national championship so now how does one get to that level in the national championship without equipment so i remember when i started off it was all i was on borrowed weapons borrowed cartridges uh, all of that in order to uh, get my own import uh, because that that only if you hit a certain standard in the national championship are you allowed to do that so but the federation has uh, made some uh, really great moves where they have uh, changed um, the ruling for aspiring shooters and everything so it's definitely much easier now to get equipment than it used to be earlier so things are looking up now yeah okay. and we also have a lot more ranges all over the country than we had before so that only helps to kind of get more people from all the states in order to uh, get to shooting yes yes yeah. that's excellent at least things have improved in some way or the other yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah so how do you rate um, how do you rate uh, the other shooters in our country like Hina Sidhu Apurvi Chande and Manu Bakrika Manu Bakar, Apurvi Chandela, Hina Sidhu are all champs and uh, have got uh, India's so many laurels on uh, the international yeah. front. And uh, I would uh, especially like uh, Hina has been absolutely astounding in pistol. Uh, Apurvi and uh, Manu is, uh, I think, when, when she started, she was probably 14 or 15 or something. And just look at her, she's on billboards, and she's, uh, yeah. you know, so well and all of that so it's, it's yeah. just good to show that we are actually heading in the right direction she's got a great uh team of people behind her so has apurvi apurvi comes from my hometown so i have a little soft i have uh, made a soft corner for her and uh you know she uh, she has done really really well as well whether it be the world championships be it uh, uh international whatever you name it yes. world uh, world uh, world cup finals and all of that she had and we are really looking forward to seeing her at the olympics this year uh, next year hopefully if they happen but yes. uh, there's a lot of hope in uh, the younger shooters there. yes that's true so there's a uh, question from the audience Indini Vasu is asking are you planning to open a shooting range in rajasthan ah uh, you'll hear about it when i do <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I definitely want to give back to the sport and uh, if in any way that I can and I would but I know how it feels to be uh, to wear the India colors on your back to walk, uh, you know, with the Indian flag. I mean, I, I, I can't believe there's any more. Uh, uh, there's uh, it can't be a greater sense of pride than that. And if I actually facilitate that for uh, younger kids or uh, for uh, shooters who are actually wanting to do that, then I would love to do so, and I would love to do my bit for that. Yeah. And do you do you also do a lot of social work? Uh, so now that you mention it, uh, COVID has been um, okay. It's it, it's a pandemic. It's been absolutely disastrous and all of that. But I believe there's every there's an opportunity in every crisis. So uh, when the pandemic struck, it actually I actually got a lot of time to spend at home, and I, I have the good fortune of uh, having a, uh, living on an organic farm. So we have citrus orchards, and it gave me a lot of time to sit and think as to the women in the rural area and how I could empower them by giving them their livelihood. 
so now i am uh, so that is my venture now which i'm working uh, side by side along with shooting where i'm employing women from uh, the nearby rural areas and giving them uh, getting them to work and giving them a livelihood where they can uh, uh go back home and say you know what i also bring food to the table i uh, and it also helps them in uh, gaining uh, respect from uh, people around them their self respect mm-hmm. goes up in their own eyes and they don't yeah. feel like they're actually a burden to anybody so that's what i'm working towards now so hopefully everything will go off well that's such a great cause and you're giving that power to women in the rural areas that's brilliant yeah absolutely i hope so, so. Yeah, definitely. We wish you all the yeah. best for that. Thank you. And so, how many uh, medals can we expect from India and from our shooters at the Tokyo Olympics if it happens? When it happens? Uh, from shooting, I think we will get the maximum number of medals. Given the track record of how we've been performing for the past three, four years, we have gone and picked up medals at every, and I'm saying every international competition that we have been to. so that pretty much puts us uh, right up there as far as other countries are concerned and uh, our shooters have also become a lot more professional in their approach and they're working with the right people they have a certain system that they follow and uh, the results are for all of us to see so uh, definitely olympics i i'm expecting like uh, the maximum number of medals that india has ever seen uh, if tokyo happens and even if tokyo doesn't happen if it's paris and uh, la after that or whatever definitely shooting is something that uh, that we're going to have that will not be ignored and uh, uh, we'll have uh, you know we'll have a lot to look forward to it from there we'll look forward to show from shooting yeah that's wonderful so how do you spend your time when you're not shooting what do you do in your free so time that's where like uh, you know uh, so when when the shooting season is on Yeah. We barely get any time off because uh, yeah. when it gets really hot here, then the your Euro- the European season starts off. So we travel to Italy and uh, those areas in order to compete. And once it gets really cold there, then the Asian season starts off. So then we are competing in whether it's Kuwait or UAE or whatever. So shooters, once you're a professional shooter, I don't think you get any time off. So this has been, uh, in fact, this is uh, I've been shooting for the last seventeen years now. and this is the first time that I've I've actually managed to spend so much time with family and at home and I'm absolutely loving it and managing to keep myself busy with uh, with the whole farming with permaculture yeah. with creating ecosystems uh, where I live because I feel over the years which we keep ignoring is that and everybody's talking about immunity and all of that but we've abused the environment so much over the last years that we have forgot where the essence of uh, where your food comes from with all of that so just to educate people as far as that is concerned and for them to uh, decrease the carbon footprint as much as possible i think that so that's what i'm working towards and uh, yeah so and that will go side by side even once all this is over this is definitely something which is very close to my heart and uh, i'm going to do that along with shooting for sure yeah that's wonderful yeah and do you follow other sports i watch a lot of tennis and uh, yeah and uh, yeah so tennis is my favorite i know yours basically a cricket uh, thing uh, cricket my grandmother follows so she keeps telling me about the scores and all of that and uh, yeah so apart from tennis then i also follow the girls a lot so i follow pv sindhu sana neva i'm more oriented towards that so i want to see like how you know the girls are doing in uh, beat the indian cricket team as far as women's uh, cricket team or whatever so yeah i follow right. that. so yeah. who's your favorite uh, tennis player Ah, uh, Djokovic. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And he won it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's another question from Indranil. Uh, he's asking, do the sponsors support shooting? Uh, the sponsors. Uh, well, I'm fortunate that I'm with uh, a fabulous organization called ONGC. and uh, i became an ongc in first and an olympian later and the reason why i became olympian was because of ongc because ongc gave me uh, the peace of mind in order to focus on my sport without worrying about anything else so i still remember the first day i was i uh, i was employed and i went up to, uh, to my uh, to the head sports and i said you know i got the designation of a uh, public relations officer so i went up to him and i'm like sir i mean we are sports people right so we have absolutely no clue so 
so yeah. i'm like so what would you like me to do so he's like uh, go shoot so i'm like no but i'm a public relations officer so you know what would you uh, how can i help he said how you can help is go to the field and shoot and bring us medal and just that just uh, who does that like really who does that yeah. it is such a fabulous organization and i i will be forever grateful to them that they have supported me and uh, you know uh, pushed me and uh, uh, recognized me in whatever and help me in uh, whenever there's uh, there's been a you know uh, every goes through ups and downs or whatever but they have literally been like a pillar for all their sports people so yeah sponsors for me a uh, sponsor employer everything rolled into one is ongc who i which i'm uh, the organization i'm forever grateful to that's really brilliant <laughs> <laughs> so are the indian fans uh, gradually accepting sports stars from games other than cricket uh it depends on you <laughs> i am sure for it sure it depends on the media the uh, the media yeah. has uh, the ownership and the responsibility to kind of bring uh, uh you know sports sports people from other sports to actually bring them on to the platform that you are doing in order to get recognition because the uh, it's not that they put in any amount of less work or uh, diligence or discipline into whatever they do but unfortunately uh, like they say cricket is a religion all that all of that in our country but i think uh, you know with the media supporting us we can definitely change it has changed over the last couple of years that's why you hear of pv sindhu and people are rooting for her you hearing of sanaa nehwal so definitely there's been a change and right. uh, it's not up to us because uh, you know we are doing whatever we can anyway and uh, it's up to uh, the media in order to promote us and to make us more visible because some sports are not so visible like shooting is not 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 a viewer friendly sport as such but right. it's not the shooter is not doing enough to actually reach where they're reaching in order to get the medal to the country so yeah so it's up to you shift to shanvi yeah <laughs> so it's the media actually which has to put more focus yeah. on other sports yeah. than absolutely just absolutely right yeah. so uh before i let you go one untold story on the shooting range that you would like to share uh they're untold for a reason <laughs> <laughs> i know but still yeah, yeah. uh there are plenty what would you uh, what would you like to hear you would like to hear how we all uh, uh, like uh, come together and play football or would you like to hear of a prank that somebody did uh, everything whatever you would like to share i would like to hear <laughs> there is uh, there's i mean if i could write a book i would definitely and there probably be a sequel and all of that and probably <laughs> buried under 20 feet and nobody can ever find it but uh, as a shooting community we are we are very very uh, thick we are very we are very united as well so uh, i'll we have uh, whether it's uh, so you know we used to go for this uh, to this uh, sleepy old town in italy called uh, masari for training and uh, now how does one keep themselves busy over there so there was this one time that we had a uh, we had a competition where you got this junior who would eat uh, a brick a brick and i'm talking about a kg of panna cotta and we okay. built the entire entire scenario where there was uh, we had to pay entry fee of uh, 1 euro each and that 1 euro that went for every shooter was basically to buy the brick of panna cotta and oh, wow. uh, so, and the shooter had to finish uh, uh, had to finish the entire brick in about uh, 10 minutes or something so he kept going at it at it at it at it and everybody was rooting for him rooting for him rooting for him and the last bit that he did so there was this other friend of his who was sitting right in front of him and there was a projectile motion of <laughs> because he just couldn't do it so this is this is this is the one we also play a lot of pranks on each other just to kind of like keep it lively and keep it light hearted yeah. so yeah. yeah we were like one big family like that that's wonderful that's really yeah. great thank you yeah. thank you so much uh, for being on sk live and you know sk sports kira support all all sports not only just cricket yeah. and that's what we are here yeah so thank Absolutely. you so much for being thank here you. it's a pleasure talking to you thank All you right. take care and stay safe bye, bye. bye. thank you